Bonjour, Stars Music. Uh, je suis Sheldon Dingwall. Today we're going to talk about Dingwall basses. My first inspiration for creating Dingwall started when I was 12. I just created a new design of a Telecaster. It was terrible. I will never show anybody. But then as I grew as a musician, I couldn't afford a Floyd Rose bridge for my guitar. So I designed one and made one. And then that led to guitars and necks and eventually basses. I think the most obvious thing that makes Dingwall different from other brands is that we exclusively use multi-scale or fan frets. This has created a focus on making the most even bass possible. So the most even string to string tone and the most even string to string tension. This is like using mechanics to create EQ for the bass. You don't need electronic EQ for the bass itself, just for the room and for your taste. I would say number one, what attracts musicians is the playability and then especially the tone. Because of that mechanical um, EQing, they are very easy to record and they sound very powerful live. And so most people hear the bass first and then they go, oh, I'd like to try that. It's not usually people see it and want to try it. Usually they hear it first. Faced a lot of challenges throughout my career. Uh, I tend to think of them as roadblocks. They stop forward momentum and then you have to figure out a way around them. So many, many, many roadblocks. I would say the biggest one was we lost our entire shop to a fire in 1996. At that time, we built guitars and basses, but uh, we decided to just focus on the basses afterwards. We've been using fan frets or multi-scale for most of our career. When you think about it, multi-scale is ancient. It's been around since 3000 BC. It's been used in harps and pianos um, ever since. And so it's not a new concept, but it wasn't used in electric guitars until the late 80s when a man named Ralph Novak uh, first came up with the concept. Once I tried it on bass, I just realized that there is just like with grand pianos, the longer the scale of a grand piano, the more rich the harmonics and the note is, the, the better quality of the note. Once I heard that in our basses, it became clear this is, there's no other way to build basses for me. Um, it, it has to be multi-scale. We angle our pickups mainly just to line up the harmonics. And because our pickups uh, internally, they're a reverse P, we don't require quite as much angle as it looks like we're using, but it's just to line up the harmonics. So the pickup is sensing the same tonality on each string. Now in the past, we've started with pickups that were perpendicular to the center line, so parallel to each other. That sounded good too, but uh, it was hard for people to understand. And so we had a lot of questions, why don't you angle the pickups? And I didn't have a good answer. <laughs> so we eventually uh, changed them. But we've done experiments with um, splitting the pickups and, um, you know, using the treble bridge coil and the neck bass coil and combining them. And then we've tried reversing. It's interesting how the pickups blend. So you can get an ultra range by doing that. For the longest time, we were just a custom shop and all custom shops are very expensive. We were looking for a way of providing professional quality, but at a price that's more affordable to working musicians. There are a couple of different ways of doing that. One would be to use cheaper materials and maybe open up a catalog from uh, Asia and, and choose a bridge and some pickups and some tuners. And you can really reduce your costs that way. We chose a different way of doing it. So we created basically a series, combustion, and G and now the John Taylor. We use the best quality materials available. So the woods uh, come from Canada from the same suppliers as our custom shop. The electronics are manufactured mostly in the US, but also in Korea, but they're custom made for us, just like the hardware is custom made for us. And so it's a professional quality instrument that we use uh, um, offshore manufacturing for maybe 90%. And then the final 10% is done in Canada. And we have a team that does a professional quality setup. So hopefully the instruments feel and sound uh, every bit as good as our custom shop. We've been selling the combustion for about 14 years now and the NG for just over 10 years. And the NG has been our number one seller by far. Mm -hmm. 
NG stands for Nolly Get Good. It was actually Nolly's idea to collaborate with uh, us, uh, his ideas, and with Dark Glass. And so Nolly, myself, and uh, Doug from Dark Glass, we all sat down together at, at a trade show called NAM in California. We had breakfast every morning and we talked about ideas, uh, preamps and bases, cool features and colors and things like that. It really was a collaboration. We had no idea how, how popular the bass would be, but it is it has taken off. It's transformed um, mostly metal music in the way metal music is heard and recorded. Lots of people use it for jazz, lots of people use it for rock, for all kinds of music. It has been just a wonderful bass for so many musicians. We like to use exciting colors. That has always been part of the NG, was just make the colors loud and fun and happy. A few years ago, we had the opportunity to collaborate with John Taylor. Previous to that, uh, maybe 1995, 1996, I became aware of Rupert Neve, the recording consoles that uh, he and his company made. I was just fascinated at this magical tone I kept hearing about. Back then, I thought if there was ever anybody I would love to work with, it would be Rupert Neve or the Rupert Neve company. He passed away in 2018, so I never got that opportunity. But when John Taylor came to us um, and wanted to talk about collaborating on a model for him, I thought this would be an opportunity to talk to Rupert Neve Design. They'd never built a bass preamp before. Now, as it turns out, uh, the entire engineering team are bass players. It was a real fun project for them. And they created one of the most organic, um, magical sounding preamps I've ever heard. John loves it. Uh, he says it's the best sounding bass he's ever recorded. So this is new for 2024. And we're really excited about uh, how people have responded to the bass so far. <laughs> The custom shop, it grew sort of organically for 35 years. And so most companies would plan out their production. Uh, we just kind of did stuff that we thought was cool. They start essentially with the Afterburner series, available in three models. They all share the same necks, uh, the same pickups, electronics, and then the same options. Where they differ is with the body woods and finishes. So the ABZ would be a satin finish, swamp ash, the Afterburner one, gloss finish, alder and then the afterburner 2 is semi hollow walnut with a uh, gloss finish and a nice top then we also have uh, the d rock which was voted best in show in 2019 at nam we have two combinations of more traditional looking instruments for those we shortened the scale length um, two inches and that provides maybe a more comfortable um, playing experience faster decay slightly more punchy the custom shop started with the z series and so the z model itself has been in continuous production Production. Now, how long has it been? Almost 30 years. It's still one of our top sellers. You can option it with just any top from our uh, from our web store, any finish you can think of. We have some of the best luthiers in the world, including one who just joined our team, Simon Pedalka from Russia. He brought a lot of expertise from his own career. It's been amazing working with him alongside all of our custom shop uh, team. The John Taylor is currently what we're working on and getting as many out as possible. We have a prototype of the SP-1, so basically a Super P done in production uh, version. We're letting people try it and, and see what they think. So far, everybody has been really positive about it. Beyond that, we are working on a headless design. We have several projects that aren't far enough in, in development yet to talk about, but we have maybe five years worth of models that we're working on right now. So we're really uh, grateful to Stars Music and Bass Maniac for supporting us so well here in Paris. It's one of the most wonderful cities in the world. I encourage anyone who hasn't tried a Dingwall bass to uh, come down to the shop and give it a try. The best advice if you've never played multi-scale is just close your eyes and see where your fingers lie. You'll be surprised at how natural it feels. And if you really listen, you'll be surprised at how clear and transparent the tone is. I encourage everyone, especially to, uh, if they get a chance to try one live or in the studio and I fully guarantee that you will be amazed. <laughs>